Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another Under the Microscope session. Today, we're going to be looking at uh, exam pressure and how to deal with it. I'm just setting this up. All right, hope you can hear me well and just uh, type in the chat box, everyone, wherever you're located and whatever point in time it may be. It's just gone 8 a.m. here in Brisbane. It's a Tuesday morning, February 22. How about you? What time is it now in your location? Just uh, type in the chat and let me know where you're from. Make sure everyone's here. Hello to Joy over there. Hello to Najma and Anne. Where else have we got? Just waiting for my Facebook to load up as well. I'm on four channels, everyone. We're on YouTube, OET Online YouTube and OET Center YouTube. We're on our Facebook channels as well. Um, hello in Birmingham and the UK. Welcome to Guyana in South America and Qatar. Hello to Zambia and Nigeria and the Philippines. Um, hello to Melbourne and Iraq. Saudi is here. Hello to Brazil and Botswana. Great to see people coming in from all over. A special shout out to our own OET online students, if you're joining us as well. Hello to Italy and Yemen. Welcome to Turkey. Hello to Kenya. And hello in the USA. All right, lots of people from all over. That is wonderful, everyone. Right, I've just... You can see my Facebook working now. Hello to London there. And Dubai, wonderful. We've got all channels working. So in that case, we are ready to go, everyone. Now, we will allow a Q&A here, everyone. If you look at my shirt I'm wearing, it's got the question shirt. That's for you. If you've got questions, you can ask me. I'll do my best to answer. And um, there's one question there. Ocean says it's my first attempt next Saturday for shading the correct answer. It should be dark or light shading. Is shading affecting? Well, just follow the OET Center guidelines there and make sure you use a pencil. You're using a pencil. I think it's a HB2. But double check that on the OET Center guidelines as to which pencil to use and just follow that. Um, all right, now I'm going to jump on and start talking and um, please ask questions as you go. So today we are talking about dealing with exam pressure. So let's get into it, everyone. So, you know, we all know exam pressure is real. We've all taken exams in our life at different points and especially high stakes exams. You know, high stakes exams like OET, where it affects your future employment and lots of opportunities. You know, obviously there's pressure involved with that. And language exams are particularly tough in that it's not like you can study chapter two or chapter 10 or various things of your book and know you're prepared. Language is massive. So it's, you know, it's about building a skill, you know, over time. Um, that allows you to perform well. So let's look at some of the problems associated with exam pressure. You know, when you're anxious, you lose that ability to concentrate. And that can then have multiple negative effects during the exam. You know, if you, you might be losing focus in listening if your con concentration is impaired. With listening, we know we only get one shot at it. So we can't rewind the playback. So when it comes to listening, you've got to develop that ability to concentrate, right? You've just got to concentrate. 
Uh, secondly, you may not be able to understand the sentence even after multiple readings causing anxiety to increase. So you, if you get in that mode where you can't understand something or answer a question, that can lead to stress and anxiety. But in those cases, you've just got to breathe and calm the nerves, slow the heartbeat, move on those types of activities. Uh, another problem with exam pressure, you may rush your writing because you're feeling pressure. You haven't actually planned your letter carefully or perhaps you've misinterpreted something in the case notes. Again, you've got to be careful about that and stay calm and focused. And in speaking, you may be so focused on your card um, that you forget to respond to the interlocutor, the person playing the role of the patient. So these are all real things that um, do occur in exam. And your job, obviously, to do well is to find a way to deal with those things that can occur, right? So we do have some solutions and some things that can help you. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about next. But I do see a question coming in. Is, is it correct OET is becoming harder than before? Definitely not, Ocean. It is just a, it's a very stable exam. Uh, this current format of OET has been going since 2018. So it's very stable and it doesn't change. The only thing that changes are the topics um, each exam. So no, very stable in that regard. All right, so some solutions, everyone. Well, the main solution, we'll talk about a few things today, but the main thing is good preparation over several months, depending on your level. It might take you one year or two years. It might take you four weeks. It just depends your current language level, right? About a, a B2, high B2 to a low C1. Uh, on the um, CEFR framework, you know, upper intermediate um, is where you need to be. And then the duration will just depend on yourself. Um, but a few things I can say. Those who deal with pressure the best remain focused and perform at, perform at the best. It's like in sport. It's like in any um, pressure situation. Um, those who deal with the pressure do remain focused and perform the best. So it is important that you deal with it. How can you deal with it? Well, number one, proper preparation. It's known. Proper preparation prevents poor performance because you're building confidence in your ability to deal with the different tasks that you're given because you've seen them before in your practice, working with your teachers, uh, all the videos and all the study that you've done, that's helped you build confidence. You've developed muscle memory in your hand. So your hand knows what to do, even if your brain isn't necessarily functioning as well as you'd like. So good preparation is the key of um, uh, preventing poor performance. Um, one thing we know um, from our own students and our own experience as teachers the high achievers, the people that pass the exam, they have one thing in common. They work hard. It's true. Those who work hardest um, achieve the most. So you definitely have to be a hard worker, but you've also got to be careful and selective in what you study and how you study. You need a good plan, which we'll talk about a little bit as we go on. And lastly, make sure you know the exam inside out. You're taking this exam. You need to know the exam criteria. You need to know your score required for where you're going to work. And you need to have a strategy to help you achieve that high score. Let's look at some criteria, criteria everyone. So we've got writing assessment criteria. The first thing I'll say, um, the, the main criteria that we have is on the left here. So we've got purpose, and that's scored out of three. Content is out of seven. Conciseness and clarity also seven. Genre and style, seven. 
organization and layout seven, language seven. It's a total of 38 points. Now we know the OET is scored out of 500. So if we do the math and divide um, 500 by 38, well, we can work out that every mark you're, you are given by your assessor is worth approximately, these are approximate numbers, approximately 13.1 points. So if we extrapolate that, if you need a 300, you've got to get 23 points, right? Now, that's if you're a nurse going for NMC registration, if you're a doctor for the ECFMG in the USA and also nursing in the USA, you only need that 300, um, which is a C plus, to get your score. If many of us, and this is the most widely accepted score, require a B, you're going to need 27. And that's throughout UK, Canada and USA and New Zealand and for all professions, um, not just nurses, um, not just nursing and medicine, but also physiotherapy, dentistry, pharmacy and so on. Type in what score you need, everyone. Just type in the score you need for writing on this scale. Do you need 300? Do you need 350? Some people need 400. Now, if you're doing a UK foundation program for medicine, you're going to need 400. If we have any speech pathologists out there for Australia, but also for Ireland, you're also going to need speech pathologists. You're going to have to get two 400s and two 450s, right? So if you want to get 400, you need on the, to get at least 31 points. And if you want to get 450, you're going to have to get a whopping um, 34 because that is your A. So yeah, type in everyone what score you need and also type in where you're going for. Are you going for UK, USA, Canada, Australia, New Zealand? Type in your country as well. We've got people typing in they need 350. Some people are saying 300. Keep them coming, everyone. Share with us what your required scores are. Arik is going for NMC UK. Mm -hmm. Hib has made a comment. I'm one of your students and I did well with teachers during the course, but when I tried myself, I made many mistakes. It's a good comment, Heber, and I'm going to talk about that. Um, we've got Joy Needs 400. Yep. A few people going for USA. Yep, so there's a range of scores and OET is a global exam and the different uh, bodies require different scores. But let's work on this uh, common one, this 350, for example. You know then if you have to get 350, you've got to get two, five, 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 and five. That's going to give you that 27, right? That's how you're going to get that score. So that should tell you something straight up. If you want to get that score in writing, it's all about good preparation. You've got to break it down to and write to the criteria. Now, which, which criteria is easiest for you, everyone? Share with me that. Which criteria do you find easiest to meet? Is it purpose easiest? Is content the easiest? Conciseness and clarity the easiest? Perhaps genre and style, organization and layout, or even language. Which criteria do you find easiest to meet in your own practice? Just answer that question for me. I'll wait a moment as the answers come in. Some are saying purpose is the easiest. Good. Yeah. You can write a well-structured introduction stating what you need and a conclusion with links. Wow, a lot of people saying purpose is the easiest. You get that pattern for the introduction. Yep. Mm -hmm. Any others? For me, and I would say, because you're health professionals, Purpose should be easiest. Content, 
If you, you're health professionals, that's in your area, right? That's your skill. You know, with practice, you can learn that quickly. Um, conciseness and clarity, that can take a bit of time. But again, that's writing within the word length, selecting the right information. If you've um, practiced enough, your organization and layout, if you plan your letter well, you can deal with that. All right. What I would say is the hardest, the ones we've got to be careful about, genre and style and language. Because this is about you building your vocabulary, about you writing with grammatical accuracy. So one way for you when you're planning, work on your strengths. Make sure you write a really good, um, you know, you write with purpose and a good introduction. Know your content. Make sure you're able to select that information and omit irrelevant information. That's a skill, but it's a it's not a language skill. It's more about planning and um, those thought processes that you apply. Uh, and again, organization and layout. Try to get higher scores where I've got the four ticks. And that means if you are able to get, for example, a six, if you can get a, a six, in not a five, say you get a six here, that means you can get a four in language and still get your 27 points, right? So that's something to work on. If you can be really good in organization and layout, then you might be able to get away with a four in genre and style. So it's all about getting that balance and having those strengths. So make sure you work on that. Um, in your own study, get really good at some of the criteria gives allows you to make a few more grammatical errors. Makes sense, doesn't it? So think about that in your preparation. All right. If you, and then if you have confidence, that's going to help you deal with pressure. Let's talk about speaking, everyone. So speaking again, we've got two main criteria here. We've got Linguistic criteria out of 24, intelligibility, pronunciation, fluency, appropriateness of language. That's a bit like genre and style in writing and resources of grammar and expression, which is that, that language aspect. And then you've got your communication criteria marked out of 15. And that's all about relationship building, building a rapport with the patient understanding and incorporating the patient's perspective. That means listening. You can't be card focused. You've got to listen to your patient and respond. You've got to provide structure. Um, so you've got to lead the role play and guide it forward. Um, you've got to do um, you've got to gather information, which means you've got to have a good questioning technique and you've got to give information, which again, your ability to um, reassure and explain the relevant information to your patient. Now, again, I'll ask you another question. Which criteria do you find hardest to meet? Do you find the linguistic criteria the hardest or do you find the communication criteria the hardest? Have a think about that. Which do you find the hardest? And is there communication criteria the same in your language think about that um, when you speak are you doing all these things in your mother tongue when you talk to your patients all right answer that question which is hardest for you the linguistic criteria or the communication criteria and while i'm waiting we can say the speaking assessment is out of 39 marks right so that means each, it's basically one mark equals 12.8 points, right? So in order, if you need 300, well, I don't know anywhere that accepts 300 in speaking. So that's 23. The most widely accepted is, again, the 350. And it works out about the same 27 points as in writing. That will get you your 350. Uh, 31 will get you 400. If you're that doctor going for GMC or if you're a speech pathologist, and again, speech pathologists, 
you're going to need that 450 um, in at least two skills. Um, you're going to need to get about 35 out of 39 to achieve that. All right. Some people are saying the communication criteria is hardest. Some are saying it's a linguistic, so we're getting a little bit of both there. All right. I can see some faces from OET Online. Hello to you, Anne, sir. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so what I would say here, when, when we're talking about this, let's go back to this slide. Uh, I would say to you, work really hard on your communication criteria because that's just you building that rapport with your patient. Work on techniques to do it. You know, there's many, many techniques we can use to get to have effective communication with our patients, right? That's not language. That's just a skill like you would learn any other skill for any other exam, right? It's not about language. It's just about the way that you communicate, right? Um, so get maximize your scores in this criteria. Get good at these skills. Just develop that technique to practice, right? And then language, you can't change your fluency overnight or intelligibility. You're going to make a few mistakes. It happens, we're under pressure. But the higher your score in the communication criteria, the more mistakes you can make in the linguistic criteria and still get that target score. So my advice to you all, really put a big focus on your communication criteria. Let your language and that develop over time. If that's the area that you need to focus on, do work on your grammar, of course. But honestly, you can get a lot of marks from this just by following the communication criteria. And that, again, is going to help you deal with pressure. And remember in speaking, you know, you're speaking to your patient and you speak to your patients already in your own language in your current employment. So carry that forward to OET and uh, that will help boost your scores. Okay, let's talk about reading and listening. Now, my suggestion to everyone here, um, well, again, uh, it's out of, it's, there's 42 marks for reading and listening. That's 500 um, total. So it works out every time you get an answer correct. Doesn't matter whether it's part A, B, or C. It's worth 11.9 points, right? So again, we've got our scale. If you need to get 450, you need to get 38 points. If you need to get 400, a minimum of 34. If you need to get 350, you're going to need 30 points and 325. Not many places except 300. It's pretty well everywhere for reading is A, B. Um, although the NMC nurses out there may be offering some leeway there, um, but you'll have to keep an eye on the NMC website to see what happens there. No guarantees. Uh, and if you are an allied profession for the HCPC in the UK, if you're watching this, they'll, they'll accept three Bs and one C plus, but they don't specify which skill one C plus in. So you could potentially get through with a C plus. But again, everyone, I urge you, know what your particular board requires because the medical boards are independent of each other and they make their own judgments of what score they require. So you need to know that. All right. But look, what I suggest you do, though, for me, it's about um, putting in the hours of study and tracking your performance steadily. So I would suggest that every time you do a reading or listening task, write down the date, write down the name of the task, write down the time you took, and then write down your score, all right? Keep a note of those three things, everyone. I'll type it up to make it easy. Put the date, all right? Then put the task, name, Put the time taken. And then put down your score. And do that all the time. Every time you do a task, 
keep it in, keep a log, right? And that way you're going to be able to track your performance. And the more you do, you'll start to identify your own strengths and weaknesses. And then what will happen is, as we can see, gradually over time, your scores will increase until you reach that target score, right? That's how it's going to work. And everyone's going to be different. The hours of study are down here. The more time you put in, the higher your score will go, right? So I would definitely be tracking your scores for part A, part B, part C um, to help you build that over time, all right, and work in your areas of biggest need. Part A's for both reading and listening, a great opportunity to get um, good marks, everyone. All right, just general things about reading and listening. I'll talk about it more. But look, attend live lectures for intense practice. You need to attend live lectures. You're watching them on YouTube now. If you do an organized course like at OET Online, then you'll have specific lectures designed to help you achieve, and they're live and interactive, right? Um, but for reading, obviously, you've got to build your speed, your skimming and scanning skills for part A. Um, that's just practice that speed. And for listening, we'll talk about it, but you've got to build vocabulary, um, patient language, but also you've got to have great concentration. Excuse me. The part Bs and Cs are the hardest. They're multiple choice questions. Um, but again, that's skill building. Now, one thing I would say to you, it's great to be here doing a live class and it's great to have you here, but it's what you do after class, after your class accounts. It's self-study. There's no, you know, uh, there was a comment earlier from Heber who said, I can do really well in class and I can get all the answers right. But when I do it by myself, I find it harder. Well, you're going to be doing the exam by yourself, right? So you can't just prepare for the exam by watching videos or attending live lectures. It is not enough. You need to apply what you learn. I can't, I cannot stress enough how important this is. Whatever you're doing in your classes, you've got to be able to replicate that in your own per personal performance. So that means do the practice tasks, right? At OET Online, we've got a huge range of practice tasks, and we also have a vast OET reading and listing library, and that's what our students use to really build their skills. You can check out our website later if you're interested in um, benefiting from this huge resource. We also provide private one-hour tutorials. Sometimes having that teacher in your corner identifying your own little struggles and you can get little tips, you'd be amazed. That can lead to a 10 to 15% performance increase. So there are options there if you're just falling short in these tough skills of reading and listening. All right, but bottom line, self-study everyone. You need to put in that time um, to master any strategies that you hear from the other All-Stars providers, from myself, from your teachers. You've got to put in that self-study. All right. Um, now, just talking about um, preparing. Some of you are going to do one-month intensive prep. Some of, some of you are long-term test prep. Just describe your own situation. Are you on a one-month intense program right now? Or would you say you're more a long-term test prep? Which pathway are you following? All right. Now, basically, though, this is what we tell our students at OET Online. Um, if you're doing part-time study, you're probably going to do 12 to 20 hours per week, a couple of hours every day. That will allow three hours on each skill, right? But you don't have to divide it evenly like that. You can put more hours, obviously, in your areas of need. Uh, and if you're going full time, I know a lot of people, they study, um, you know, it's a full time job, eight hours a day, every day, wake up in the morning, have a cup of coffee, study for four hours, lunchtime, take a break, do some exercise, come back, 
do your afternoon work again till 5 p.m. Have that schedule, nine to five sort of thing. A lot of people do that as well. All right. We've got a joyous saying doing the one month intense. All right. So you're probably going to want to put more hours if you can fit that in your schedule. And it says long term, but almost ready. I love the long term. You're building over time. You're not putting yourself under too much pressure. You've got work. You've got family. And OET is just one section. All right. Same with diamelis, long term. Good. Karen as well. All right. Uh, Aya asks a different question. What's the desired score for New Zealand? Depends on your profession. Depends on your profession. I think nurses, they just changed to three uh, C plus for writing, but check that out there. And the others will be Bs and medicine also B, as are the allied professions. All right. So manage, set up a weekly schedule, everyone. Set up a plan and follow it is my advice. You've got to be very organized in your study approach. Now, once you get close, the exam's coming up in just one week, right? How many people have an exam coming this weekend? There's an exam on February. What date is it, everyone? There is an exam on February 24, 25, Feb 24 for the USA, Feb 25 um, for the rest of the world. Does anyone have an exam this weekend? You might be in your final week. Few suggestions to you, everyone. Do a mock test, very important. And with that mock test, start and finish at the same time your actual exam will be. So if your exam is at 9 a.m. in the morning, do your mock test at 9 a.m. in the morning, start to finish. If your exam is at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, or if it's a computer-based test, it might be evening at 6 p.m. Whatever time your test is, do a mock test at the same time because that way you're going to be able to match your mental state and capacity at that time. It's very, very important to do a mock test, everyone, because you are going to face unknown pressures in the exam if you don't. And so you have to be ready for it so you can deal with it. So mock tests, very important. Um, and we have mock tests, if you're interested as well, of course, on our website. Quite a few people going for Feb 25. Well, good on you. I hope this is helping your final, final strategies for you. In terms of listening, if your exam is with speakers, practice with speakers. We've had a lot of situations where students have um, practiced with headphones, done all their preparation, gone into the exam, found out there's no headphones and a big shock, suddenly listening to speakers. It probably doesn't make a huge difference, but it could be 5% variation, even 10%, just that unexpected um, factor. So know where, what your venue provides, very important. And then practice in that same way. Um, be targeted. Get out your get out your magnifying glass. Focus on your areas of need. This is one week to go, everyone. In your last week, don't overdo it by working on all skills. Just work on the ones that you're finding hardest. Right. Give yourself time to breathe. Just pick out. You've you've kept a chart. You know where your weak areas are. So work on those areas. Um, if you can. Take a week's leave off work so you can be exam focused. It is a high stakes exam. So if you are able to do that, take a break for one week, calm yourself, make sure you're well prepared. Um, as it gets closer, you need to develop a good routine and get a good night's sleep two to three days before your exam. Look, you might be nervous a day before the exam. You may not sleep well on that Friday night before your exam. Do not let that phase you. We're humans. You've already done it in your workplace. You can function quite well without that um, if you miss one night's sleep. But if you miss multiple nights sleep, 
you're going to be run down a little bit, right? So have that good routine, get a good night's sleep, a couple of days out in that pattern, that's going to help you perform well on exam day. And if you're worried that you may not be able to um, sleep well on exam day, then when you do your mock test, do your mock test after a poor night's sleep, right? Where you didn't get the full eight hours, maybe you had a fitful night, you're awake. Try to do that mock test when you aren't feeling necessarily 100% if you feel that's what's going to happen to you on exam day. You might be surprised about how well you do, but you're trying to replicate the conditions of exam day. Um, and lastly, get your transport organised. We do hear stories every exam, every exam where people, for whatever reason, didn't get to their venue on time. I can tell you this, everyone. Venue managers have rules and protocols to apply. So you do need to be there on time uh, in order to take that exam. Aim to get to your venue at least 30 minutes before the exam, before the time given, and then you can just breathe and relax. You don't want to feel panicked because your transport is running late. All right. Now, night before the exam, follow the same routine. Um, as I said before, don't stress if you didn't get a good sleep. You can survive on caffeine, right? Have that cup of coffee, not too much. Have a short um, or a long black just to give you that hit. Um, don't study new material. Just revise any notes. That's all you've got to do. No new material. Um, in that last night, I would advise taking a break. Don't really study that evening. You've just got to unwind and relax. No devices, no phone, no study in bed. You've just got to sleep. All right. And the last thing, everyone. So listening. Um, listening is the very first thing you're going to do. So it's going to be a shock. So you really need some concentration. I suggest... You do a pre-exam warm-up on your phone by playing a part A task just to tune your ear and get you thinking in English and in the zone. Remember that the very first thing you're going to face on exam day will be English, will be listening. So you must be prepared for it. A lot of people, I think, have struggled because they're, they weren't fully in the zone in the first part of the exam. So that's vital. You need good concentration. It's about 40 minutes long and you've got to tune that ear. So do a little warm up task, have it ready, thinking in English, even listening to the radio, listening to anything in English is good. That's going to get you ready. For reading, it's 60 minutes and it's about time management. Don't look around at others. That's not going to help you. Focus on the job. Don't spend too long on the tough questions that are hard to comprehend because that anxiety can increase. Just move on if you need to. Stop, breathe, pause, breathe, try again or go to the next task, right? It's all about time management. Don't let the anxiety get to you. Writing as well as time management, you've got a total of 45 minutes, including the reading time. Read those case notes carefully in that five minutes. Again, no looking at people around you. Um, then when you can pick up your pen, start to plan and make notes before you write. That's very important. You've got to have a, it doesn't have to be comprehensive, but you need a plan. And know who you're writing to and why you're writing to them. You've got to know that. And then as you write, check your grammar, grammar at the end of each paragraph. Try not to break your flow. If you've got ideas and you know what you want to write, write it down before you lose it. But when you get after that, just check your grammar, articles, prepositions, verb use, punctuation, spelling. Just do a quick review of that as you write. For speaking, it's going to take you about 25 minutes. You need to be patient-focused. So. The best thing you can do 
is imagine that you are talking to a patient, right? And it's your field of knowledge. Knowledge. You're the expert. So take control of the role play. And even if the patient or the interlocutor is being anxious, you need to be the voice of calm. Um, focus on your task. You've got your bullet points. Um, follow them and do what you need to do. All right. I'll take a little breather, everyone. Take a screenshot of that. Um, and I'm really going to say a lot of people struggle with listening. A lot of people get a 3.30 in listening. And you can avoid that with concentration and being ready for it. Time management for reading and writing and being patient focused for speaking. A few questions coming through. MM says, if I got 3.20 for reading, 3.10 for listening and pass around speaking, what shall I do or time need to redo the exam? Well, look, if you got 3.20 to 3.10, we, each mark is worth, you know, 11.9 marks, say basically 12 marks in reading and listening. So you need another three or four marks. That's a 10% improvement. So you've got to find 10% there, MM. Put your energy into it. Um, do a study course, do a proper course, get teacher support, whatever you need to do, and you'll be able to increase in that way. Um, Elma says, Part A and listing Part A practice material recommended. Yeah, come to OET online. Check out our free trial course to start with. If you want material, check out the free taste the course, and then if you like what you see, we have a huge range of resources in our courses, and you don't, you can just get reading and listening only. It's not expensive. Um, Chuck Childy says, is there a transcript in the real listening exam? There's always a transcript, but you won't see it, Childy. You won't see it. Christensen says, can we cross out the answer instead of erasing it? Yes, you should in listening. Just cross it out. That will save you time. Um, are there any listening examples we can listen to? Exactly, Sandra. We have a lot of course content like that at OET Online. I says struggle with reading. Well, do what I said earlier. Attend classes, watch videos, but then those strategies and skills that the teachers provide you apply that to your own writing and just keep doing it until you master it. It will happen. All right. Um, and Twinkle says for ECFMG, what should I score minimum on practice test to make sure I will definitely pass? Well, for reading and listening, I would go for 32. 32 is your buffer. You might get through on 30, but I would be targeting 32. For that 27 for writing um, and uh, speaking but you can only get you, you can get your own reading and listing scores yourselves but for uh, writing and speaking you need a teacher to guide you and we have an expert team of teachers to help you <clears throat> uh, is capitalization of words marked in reading not in part a no it's not sore um, Ocean, how to get a high score in communication criteria? Build a patient rapport. Listen carefully and respond to what the patient says. Have, provide reassurance. Show empathy. Be that caring health professional is going to get you those scores. Um, so... All right, I think I've answered those questions. So now, everyone, um, lastly, you must believe in yourself. So if you put in the time, it's about confidence. Trust your processes. You've done the work, so now deliver. You're here on exam day because you earned it. You got to this. You got this far. You've earned it. Believe in yourself. Think of it as a challenge and an opportunity. You can do this. Your health professionals. You've achieved a lot in your life. This is one more thing. Now, 
We have so many students who have succeeded with us, everyone. Here's a bit of inspiration. Here's Prashant, medicine out of India. Look at those scores, everyone, solid scores across the board, a lot of hard work. He liked our prolific teaching sessions and our organized course. Um, the tips that he got helped him get these results. Um, and he's going to Australia. Good on you, Prashant. We have Sylvia, a nurse going for UK. Sylvia worked hard. Um, she was a long-term planner. Shout out to you, Sylvia, if you're watching this video. But Sylvia is now on her way to the UK. She put in the time and she got the scores. She had her teachers like, OET online teachers like Laura, May, Catherine and Gavin, really helping her on the way. She liked the organization and it allowed her to build her skills. And she also, we have a, who'd like to get study buddies, everyone? Remember at OET Online, we have a student forum. So she met a lot of people on our forum and they, they created the team and they studied together and they're still working together and friends to this day. So if you need study buddies, come to OET Online. You might make a friend for life, a future colleague. We had Anka, who's a pharmacist, going for UK. Again, all those three 350s, and that's what she needed, and a good score in speaking. She had her expert teacher, Catherine, gave her the confidence of getting those scores. She attended Laura's and my lessons, found them useful, and Gavin was amazing, who helped improve her reading skills. Look at the difference, everyone. They went from She went from 280 to 350 just through that hard work. Lastly, we have Ellen, our speech pathologist. Speech pathologists in Australia, would you believe they need two 450s and two 400s? And look, she got three scores above 450 and one above 410, and that was enough. Um, she was guided by our expert teacher, Sarifa, as long with tutorials that um, I provided. And... Um, there was a lot of frustration, but Sarifa was encouraging and believed in me. Look, we're all at that point in, life, in our lives where we need someone to believe in us. And that's what we can give you at OET Online. Our teachers are so dedicated. They love helping people like you part. So if you want someone to believe in you, come and join one of our courses. All right. That's for some inspiration, everyone. I hope that made you feel good. Um, lastly, we've got a brand new course, everyone, an updated course. We have our Turbo. Now, we've changed the Turbo. Uh, it used to have a two-month duration, but we've reduced the duration to one month because we know a lot of people, they don't want two months. They've just got an exam coming up. And they need that intense study. So if you've got a one-month exam coming up, check out our new updated Turbo. You're going to get unlimited live virtual lectures you're going to get two writing corrections a private speaking le uh, lesson and you're going to get your reading and listening sets there's three of them but remember you get a lot more than that because you get the unlimited live classes for one month so that is 15 hours per week right two classes per day no repeat content no repeat content so if you need one month of intense study Check out the Turbo. Super value. That's Australian dollars, not US, not euros. That's 175. I think this is going to be a very popular update, everyone. So check that out. All righty. So I'll just stop this share, everyone. Few more questions coming through. Harshane says, I got 290 writing, 310 speaking, 260 speaking, 260 reading with self study. Please explain what course I have to join. Look, what my suggestion to you, everyone, and to everyone else, come to our website. I'll drop the link in there for you in the chat.
check it out. Um, yeah, look, so when you come to our website, OET Online, you just select your profession. So say you're nursing, you click on nursing, and these are all the courses for nursing. Now we've got all skills plus option, all skills, writing only, speaking only, reading only, or listening only, and we've got mock tests. So this is good. If you only need to work on a single skill, you can do that with us. If you need a mock test, you can do that. If you need to work on all skills, you can do our all skills courses and just for nursing or for medicine, whatever your profession. Here's our brand new course, the Turbo Updated, everyone. So check this out, everyone. Um, just create an account and read through the descriptors and then choose a course based on what you need. Check out our plus courses, everyone. This time I'll pretend I'm a doctor. I click on medicine. These are new courses as well, everyone, at All Skills Plus. They've only been going for a few months, but they're very, very popular. What's the difference? They do cost a bit more, but they're bringing results. Already we're getting success stories from these courses. The plus means you get um, extra private tutorials. Some students want to work one-to-one -one with a teacher. So if you want to get all the benefits of your regular all skills course plus private tutorials this is the course for you all right um, if you're watching your budget though go for your all skills great courses here really good value check out this brand new turbo standard as well very very popular we spoke about long-term plans if you've got a year to build your skills you know it's going to take your time you're getting your 250 score, not 350. You've got to go up 100 points. Try the Ultimate or Platinum. Ultimate has 12-month access and Platinum has six months. So we've got it all there for you, everyone. We are a premium provider. We've been doing this for um, up to 20 years now, and we have a free taste of course. So come along and check out our free taste of course, everyone. Nothing to lose, some great practice material. You can even do a placement test, everyone, to see where you're at. I'm putting those links for you, everyone. Sharma says, I created an account and it's not working. Uh, the verification, that just means probably your spam filter there. Sharma, check your spam filter, but send a message to info at OET Online. If you don't get, if you don't find that uh, confirmation in your inbox, and they'll be able to fix you up. Seema says I did the exam eight times, and each time I dropped in a different subtest. No logic. I guess you just need a bit more consistency, Seema. I can really get how frustrating that will be, but again, apply what we've spoken about today, and. I think you can develop that consistency. So try to internalize what we covered today. Watch the video again. Um, join one of our courses. We can help you get that consistency. All right. Chidi says, what were the requirements for UK Foundation? Well, that's for doctors. Chidi, you need four times 400. That's what you need. All right. Okay, I think I've covered everything. So I hope you found this session useful, everyone. Um, good luck whenever your exam is. Apply these strategies and you will pass OET. Believe in yourself. You can do this. All right, that's enough for me. We will see you in the next session in approximately one month. Bye for now.